This is the number one accessory that I would look at when photographing a solar eclipse. Hey folks, it's Nathan from Nikon, here today to talk about the upcoming solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th, 2024. This video is primarily going to be concerned with the planning that surrounds a solar eclipse. And I'll start with lens selection. Even though the sun is very, very large, we have to remember that it is also a very, very long ways away. So to effectively fill the frame, we're going to want to pick a lens that's on the longer or telephoto side of things. A couple good options would be something like the Z70 to 200 millimeter, the Z100 to 400 millimeter, the Z180 to 600 millimeter, which I will be using personally, or even something like the Nikkor Z 600 or 800 millimeter PF lenses. After our lens selection, there's a few accessories that I would consider, starting with this. This is the number one accessory that I would look at when photographing a solar eclipse. What it is, is a neutral density solar filter. What it does is essentially block the highly concentrated light from the sun from melting your camera sensor. Have you ever burned a leaf on the sidewalk with a magnifying glass? Well, that's essentially what you're doing when you're pointing your camera lens at the sun, except you're not burning a leaf, you're burning your camera's sensor. This will prevent that from happening. As a tip, I would recommend purchasing one of these sooner rather than later because they tend to sell out rather quickly as we get closer to the actual solar event. Now that we've protected our camera, we need to think about protecting our own eyes. To do that, I would recommend purchasing a pair of these solar sunglasses. These are relatively inexpensive and can be picked up from a variety of different locations. The final accessory that I would consider is a good tripod. That'll come in handy if you're doing any sort of multiple exposure technique, which we'll talk about in a future video. After compiling our gear and accessories, we need to find a good location. Now, this may seem pretty basic, but we have to remember that a solar eclipse can last as short as three to four minutes, leaving very little time in the moment to actually compose a shot. So what I would recommend is going out ahead of time, finding a location, scouting it, and practicing there so that when that very limited window occurs, you are well versed in that location and don't need to waste any unnecessary time. Also, because we're still a ways away from the actual solar eclipse, we don't yet know what the weather is going to be like. It could be raining, it could be sunny. Ideally, it would be sunny, but we just don't know yet. So to go along with your primary practice location, I would recommend having a secondary or backup location that you can opt to go to if your primary location seems like the weather is not going to be that favorable. In conclusion, we've covered lens selection, accessories, and location are all important when planning for a solar eclipse. I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you in the next one.